In this episode of Classic Car Rescue... Oh, my son! Motoring royalty leads to revolution in the garage. But at least, you know, say to me, someone else will come in and do it. As the team take on their riskiest and priciest rescue yet, a Ferrari Mondial. Oh, that's my type of race car. But playing with big boys costs money. We're gonna have to have damn deep pockets for this car. Especially when the car's more rust than noble blood. It'd be nice to see a bit of metal somewhere on the car. But can they turn it round in time to impress a car expert whose appraisal would be the benchmark for success or failure? Meet Bernie Feynman, a no-nonsense cockney mechanic with over 40 years' experience in the trade. Go on, my son! Yes! He's teamed up with Mario Passioni. I'll give you 500 for it. A Canadian car dealer who buys and sells anything for the right price. Five grand tops. You've got grand. a deal. <laughs> United by their love of classic cars. It's fantastic. And separated by pretty much everything else. Relax. Don't tell me to relax. Relax, Bernie. Don't tell me relax. Bernie, relax. They're on a mission to get neglected classics back on the road, but only if they can agree on which road to take. Mario, you can't go on a trip. You play a For Italian stallion Mario, there's just one make of car that makes his heart beat that little bit faster. The Ferrari. I've loved Ferraris ever since I was a kid. They're the most iconic car in the world. But rescuing motoring royalty like this doesn't come cheap. So Bernie's always resisted. Ferrari mentioned the word creme of the creme. But to be quite honest, they're so bloody expensive to repair, you're never going to make any money out of them. I want to drive one. I don't want to restore one. Determined to win Bernie over, Mario's brought him to a celebration of all things Ferrari at the world-famous Spa Grand Prix circuit in Belgium. This is what buying a Ferrari is all about. Racing, coming to the track, all the pedigree. Like Henry Paul, every colour you want, as long as it's red. With so many incredible Ferraris on display, by the end of the day, even Bernie is beginning to fall under the spell of Italy's most iconic export. Now, this is my type of car. Look at this. That's proper engineering. This is a real treat. These Ferraris are absolutely magnificent. Oh, my son! I'm really starting to warm the idea of actually having a crack at one. This is good news for Mario and a complete U-turn for Bernie. A week ago, it was a very different story. People always fall in love with Ferraris and Italians. If they have depends to... what's wrong with it, that's the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. The minute you think Ferrari, all of a sudden you think ding, 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 like five, six letters of bloody money. Despite Bernie's lack of enthusiasm, Mario has found a Ferrari he's hoping will change his partner's mind. A classic 80s Mondial. In the brash champagne fueled 80s, money talked and image was everything. To capitalize on the growing middle class market, Ferrari launched a mid range model, the Mondial 8. A three litre V8 engine, a revolutionary detachable steel subframe, and a sleek design courtesy of world renowned designer Pininfarina came together to create Ferrari's most affordable model. But as a whopping 24 grand, the equivalent of almost 75 grand today, they still weren't cheap. The Mondial Mario's found is going for just 6,000, a price he hopes will win over Bernie. See the rot there? Yeah, Bernie, they all got rot. Yeah, rot You didn't there. think it was this price, but we got there. it, uh, like, pristine, did you? Well, it's open. Who leaves a Ferrari open? So far, Bernie's not persuaded. It's in an absolute state. Hello, Hello, guys. You come to see the car? Yes, I was speaking oh. to you on the phone. Hi, I'm Mario. I'm Mario, too. Oh, nice to meet you. Not another Mario. I'm Mario. Oh, oh, nice but... to meet you. Mario number two lives and breathes Ferraris. He spent a lifetime restoring them. But he's had this Mondial for five years, and other projects have always come first. So now he's prepared to offload it for the right price. And it soon becomes obvious why he's not worried about locking it. Where's the engine? <laughs> We're just fixing it at the moment. 
What do you mean fixing? What's actually the matter with the engine? Well, some of it is over here. There, there are the heads, and that's the block. You obviously like jigsaw puzzles. Not only will they have to refit the engine, they'll have to put it together first. Ferrari engines are notoriously complicated engines. It's all in bloody bits and pieces. Probably could assemble the whole thing for about £6,000. How long would it take you to do it? Probably a couple of weeks, but it'll be awesome when it's finished. Mario's plan to win over Bernie is backfiring badly. While I'm trying to strike a deal, Bernie's starting to twitch, and I can see some steam coming out of his ear. I don't have the confidence he can get it done in two weeks. If he's been sitting there for five damn years. Mario. Hello, Mario. Good name. I like the name, but I don't think we can make a deal. Back at the office, despite the disappointment of the first Mondial, Mario's doggedly pursuing his Ferrari dream. You got anything for sale there, because there isn't anything on our side of the channel. I'm, I'm like, really desperate. After a week of dead ends, he finally gets a break and locates another potential car. And he's got a plan to get Bernie on side. Bernie, get your passport. What for? You're not going to believe this. Which brings us back to Spa. Hello, Olivier. Now Bernie's finally on board, Mario reveals the Ferrari he wants to buy. When Olivier put up the shutters, all I could think was, this screams money. Definitely, yeah. Uh, original color was blue. The Mondial's been covered in a vinyl wrap to make it stand out for the track. But the downside is it's impossible to tell the state of the bodywork underneath. Sometimes all the glitters ain't gold. All I know is that that bodywork has got to be stripped. But with a Ferrari, the proof is in the pudding, or in this case, the engine. May I think we take for a little run? Yeah, down there, they OK? Yeah, not on the track. No, 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 just, just down there. We took the car down the road for a little drive. And, of course, Mario being Mario, boom, he wants to put his foot down to the metal. Like, leave me out. Mario, the slow down the tracks up there, you man. You've got the bleeding cars doing 150 mile an hour, and this rather large Canadian wants to go on the bleeding track. <laughs> Crazy, you man. Yeah, baby, we've got to buy this car. Mario's sold on the car, and now Bernie seems keen. It's time to strike a deal. So, Olivier, yeah. how much you want for this car? 15. 15. Yeah. Oh, come on, man, look. It needs a clutch. It needs a motor rebuild. It needs more tires. 12? No, no. I give you my last offer. Today, in cash, yeah. I give you 10,000 euros. And that's it, no more. 10,000. Okay. At 10,000 euros, the equivalent of just over eight and a half grand, the Mondial is a steal as long as there are no big surprises. Look, to be frank, we're going to have to put money into it, no matter what it needs, but I'll tell you something, that's going to be a peach. Coming up, the team get their first glimpse of the Ferrari. That, that sounds too good to you, does it, fellas? And Bernie and Mario turn on each other. My job's to no, make a deal. Yeah, you made a deal on another pair. Ah, there it is. Aha. Uh -huh. After failing to find an iconic Ferrari Mondial they can turn a profit on in the UK... Where's the engine? The boys have bought an ex-track car at the Spa Grand Prix circuit in Belgium. This is what buying a Ferrari is all about. Mario, you can't go on a track. But it's been covered in a vinyl wrap, making a proper inspection impossible. Sometimes all the glitters ain't gold. Time to find out if they bought a Ferrari thoroughbred or a donkey. Four days after Mario persuaded Bernie to part with over eight grand for a Ferrari, the car finally arrives in the workshop. And Bernie's doubts are starting to resurface. Worried about something? Look at it, it's beautiful. I like the car, Mario. Mm -hmm. I, I like the car. But I'll tell you something, these can be trouble. And I guarantee you, we're going to have to have damn deep pockets for this car. Mm -hmm. Wait, mark my words. Listen, Ferraris Wait. either run when you get them, or they run like 
And this one, when we started, ran good. The clutch is good. Yeah, we can fix what it up. Else we haven't we'll failed give it a good it. rub. Let's get the guys in and get another pin because they're going to be working on it. Bernie and Mario may be divided on the car, but there's nothing new there. Hey, guys, come on in and have a look at this car. The project's success depends on the rest of the team's buy in. Yeah, it's a Ferrari. It's a Ferrari. I mean, it's a Ferrari. We're going up in the world, girls. My face, and I think everybody else's face, lit up. Wow, a Ferrari. You know, we get to work on this. And it runs? Yeah. Drove it on the track. The first thing I want to know is, does it run? And we want to hear the engine run. You know, it's a Ferrari. What's the matter? There's no power. No nothing. No dash lights, no nothing. nothing. Oh, here we go. We're started. <sighs> Nick gets in the car, turns the key, nothing. You know, it's it could be... the track. Let's... And what did I say it before? It might be simple, Bernie. It's never going to be something simple. It's an Italian car. If they have an electrical fault, it can be just an absolute nightmare. Ferrari electrics are notoriously tricky to fix. And if this is an electrical fault, it could be a budget buster. And the dodgy electrics aren't the only unwelcome surprise. Here we go. Oh, no. That don't sound too good to you, does it, Phyllis? No. Go on, Dan, give it your worst. Oh, no, you are going to laugh. Dan is tapping and tapping, just hole after hole after hole, really. Looks like we struck gold again, boys. Oh, oh. you are having a bleeding laugh. And the holes are getting bigger and bigger. There ain't no metal on the car. They were a bit horrified at what they saw, but they are only outer seals, so it's still not looking too bad. Until I spotted the front cross member. Yeah, those uh, seals are the least of your worries, boys. We've got a rotten front cross member. So now we've got to do chassis work on a Ferrari. A cross member is attached to provide structural stability and keep the body panels in alignment. Without it, the body of the Mondial could twist, causing potential damage which could dramatically affect the handling. Definitely not the sort of thing you want in a high-performance sports car. We bought a Ferrari for 10K. What do you think, we're going to get a museum piece for 10K? This is making me feel Sorry. sick, mate. At that point, I'm thinking, just look a bit harder beyond the Ferrari badge that's on it. No one's looking at Mario. Everyone's looking at me. Didn't you see this one, Bernie? Yeah, I saw the car. Did you have blinkers on? Well, I didn't give him enough time to look at it. I didn't give him enough time to lift it up. You looked it over, so don't give me that putt putt. It's my fault. I'm not saying it's your fault. Yeah, you it's a joint up. responsibility. So he didn't look at it, and he found all, it's, all, it's all his fault. He was there with me. Boy, My job's to make a deal. I made a deal. Yeah, the car you made runs, a deal with another car goes. To be honest, he's um, a little bit more subdued than normal. He hasn't really got anybody to shout at, really. A well-restored Mondial can command up to £20,000. So, to have a chance of making a profit, the boys can't spend any more than ten grand on turning this rust bucket into a racer. Over the next four weeks, they'll need to... Locate and fix the electrics. Remove and replace the rusted cross member. Repair and respray the bodywork. And give the engine a full service. Before they can tackle the chassis and the electrics, they need to check there's nothing else that's been missed on the bodywork. And that means stripping off the Mondial's racy vinyl covering. As the Ferrari's original blue colour reveals itself, Everyone has an opinion on the final finish. I figured out what color I'm going to paint it. Oh, hang on. I think I should be out for debate. Yeah, I thought about it. I debated it over coffee, and I picked the color. But it's not just up to you, remember. I would like to see this in a light metallic blue. Oh. That would look absolutely nah, nah, nah. beautiful. I think you're spot on there, Bernie. Nah, nah, oh, thank you, Daniel. For the first time, I'm you. agreeing with you. Daniel's at least got a bit of bloody taste. I'm Italians. Italians always have taste. The right? only thing you've got a taste for is spaghetti. Well, what colour are you thinking about, Mario? We're going to paint this yellow. This oh, your bike is going to be yellow. Yeah, no, no, no red. Red. I'd rather yellow than blue. I expected better of you, my man. We're going to paint this car yellow, and that's the end of it. If we're painting it yellow, I think you're going to be having to load up the gun and paint it yourself, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, that should be a laugh for a start. Don't get me going, because I will. <laughs> Any Ferrari is guaranteed to get the pulse of a true car fanatic racing, and the Mondial is no exception. It was one of the status symbols of the 80s, 
with Hollywood gods like Al Pacino driving them on screen and Michael J. Fox off screen. And a real god, or rather his right-hand man, giving the Mondial the holy seal of approval. Almost 7,000 flew out of Maranello in its 13-year run. Proof that the Mondial was one of the most popular Ferraris of all time. While the team crack on with the rescue, Mario's off to indulge in a spot of shopping. Ferrari shopping. Ferraris are a different type of car. Different type of people own them, and they expect a different level of uh, service. His destination is the UK's largest supplier of genuine Ferrari parts. And a shrine to the prancing horse. Yeah, you know, Scott, there's lots of stuff I need here, right? Yeah, I've checked and it's all in stock. So, where? Don't worry. This is absolutely fantastic. So I went to this beautiful dealership. I think I arrived to heaven. How many floors up does this go? Uh, three. Mario's like a kid in a candy shop. It's just very expensive candy. I don't think I'm going to go home today. I think I'm going to stay here. <laughs> You're more than welcome. <laughs> OK, right, yeah. let's get your cam belts. This is the holy grail warehouse of Ferrari parts. You certainly got enough for, like, the next 20 years. <laughs> yeah. They had three or four floors stocked with Ferrari parts. I haven't seen these in years. That's an early uh, 250 manifold, that is. Yeah. A lot of people get them made because they don't realize you've actually got them in stock. Every conceivable body panel, fender, nut, bolt, screw, relay, switch. We should have some doors down here. No, you got a lot of doors here. <laughs> yeah, we've got I've few. never seen so many in my <laughs> life. Among the endless shelves of parts, Mario spots a little piece of history. Scott. Yeah. Is that what I think it is? 250 uh, wing, yeah. And obviously, it still needs a bit of work doing to it, but this is how they were from the factory back in wow. the early days. The classic 250 is the great granddaddy of our Mondial. It was Ferrari's first ever mass produced four seater car and a personal favourite of Enzo Ferrari himself, who regularly used his 250 to take his pet dog for a spin. All these vintage parts, they're all handmade. Can you imagine? This thing was made 60 years ago by some little old Italian guy who might even be related to me. While Mario's in Ferrari heaven, the boys back at the garage are in Ferrari hell. With the vinyl covering stripped off, the team can finally get a good look at the Mondial's bodywork. An expert Nick isn't impressed. You know, we've got a lot of blistering all around the bodywork, especially here on the quarter. But it's still not as bad as we thought. I mean, when all them stickers come off, I thought we were all going to have bloody holes. Well, yeah, I see what you're saying, but you just know it's just going to be further underlying problems. You know, the whole thing, it's just a, it's a classic 10-yard car, isn't it? What does that mean? Well, good from 10 yards away, Ben. Much like yourself. Nick's right to be cautious. Using authentic Ferrari parts will blow the budget. Instead, he'll have to fabricate what they need from scratch. It might save money, but he's looking at a long haul to deliver everything they need in the tight four-week time frame. Back in the land of Ferrari, the schedule is the last thing on Mario's mind. Bernie's happy going down some back street or some dumpy garage. But for me, this is the way I see myself doing this. I feel I'm in my realm. This is the place I want to be. Now, these cars are 200,000 pounds and up. 95% so of them all go up in value. And I got to figure out which one is going to be the next one that's worth money. In his enthusiasm for all things Ferrari, Mario seems to have forgotten that he already owns a potentially collectible Ferrari. Fancy being the owner of the 1981 Ferrari Mondial being refurbished in the show? Stay tuned to find out how to win. Luckily, the rest of the team are working hard to turn the Mondial round. Nick's moved on to tackling the rotten cross member. It's a key structural part of the car, so there's no room for error. First, he removes the old rusty through bar, then sands down the joints to get rid of any last traces of rot, then fabricates new steel bars and welds them into place. Job done. A week into the restoration, Danelle is cracking on with the Mondial's bodywork while Bernie tackles the car's mysterious electrical problem. By running a charge through the electrics and tracing the current with a multimeter, he should be able to work out exactly where the problem is. Well, that's the theory anyway. Bernie! Bernie, we got to... Oh, I, 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 get a fire extinguisher. It was only this little tiny puff of smoke. And he's screaming, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie. OK, all right, all right, don't panic. 
the most dangerous thing, really, was Danielle. I mean, I got more of it over me than he actually got in the wiring. What have you oh, just gone and done? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> My God. And he's cool, pretty laid back. Look, the saving grace is we had a short, and at least I found out where it is. And then Mario walks in. Hey! What's going on? I look around, there's something going on. I look at Bernie, he's got that dumb look on his face. What do you mean? We're just saying in the bodywork down. What are you talking about? I smell smoke. Then Al, you smell smoke? So he's questioning me. I can smell it. What is it? What is it? What is it? What's the fire extinguisher? We always leave a fire extinguisher there. He's lying, and he's always trying to blame it on somebody else, like Danelle, me, the bus down the street. Uh, you're too calm, and I know you. I'm always Danelle. Am I always full. calm? You two guys are too <laughs> together. We had a little problem. There was nothing wrong with this car. We drove the car. We had not... a short. What were you trying to do? What were you when guys doing? When the car first came in, what happened? It kept on losing the battery charge. Yeah. So I was checking it there, and all of a sudden, the wiring went up. Next Don't burn this car. Up. I don't give a what you do. Don't burn this car. It may have been a slightly dramatic outcome, but as far as Bernie's concerned, it's just a small hiccup. It was a short. OK, it's not insurmountable. The car ain't gone up. What can we repair it? But Ferrari fanatic Mario doesn't see it that way. Bernie's a great mechanic, and he's worked on a lot of cars. But we got a Ferrari here. If they're to maximize the profit on the Mondial, he doesn't want any more Bernie-caused mishaps on such a high-performance car, particularly when it comes to its all-important service. So he takes matters into his own hands. Hi, it's Mario. How are you doing? Listen, I need a favor. Bernie's almost already burnt the car, futzing around with it. I don't even know what he did. So I called Ferrari expert. Two days after the electrical fire, while Bernie's off-site, Mario sneaks in someone who loves Ferraris as passionately as he does. So, Mario... Yeah? Uh, oh, here it is. Mario number two has serviced all manner of Ferraris over the years, and Mario number one is convinced his specific experience is what the Mondial needs. It's a bit dirty, I think. What Give it a power wash. It's nice working with a guy who's relaxed likes his work, everything's got to be clean. We see eye to eye. He's a bit shorter than me, buddy. We see eye to eye. It's a match made in heaven as a Ferrari-based bromance blossoms. Shame it hasn't got a seat. I wanted to drive it. <laughs> Coming up, Bernie finds out about the new mechanic. I know you ain't got many manners, but at least, you know, say to me, someone else should have come in and do it. And the team takes a vote on the most vital decision of all. What colour is this? Mario's persuaded Bernie to take on one of the most iconic names in motoring, Ferrari, with the restoration of a classic 80s Mondial. We're going up in the world, girls. Unfortunately, the car is more rust bucket than racing royalty. Oh, no, you are going to laugh. When Bernie sends the electrics up in smoke, Mario replaces him with Ferrari expert Mario number two. So, Mario, yeah. this oh, is here the car. it is. Despite causing the electrical fire, Bernie did manage to sort the mystery fault. Look at that. Well, that's not bad at all, is it? Huh? That's really good. Sounds good, yeah, very good. The engine may sound good, but to keep it that way and to ensure the Mondial delivers the sort of high performance expected of a Ferrari, a full and thorough service is crucial. Well, because it's being used for a track car, it will definitely have a good motor because these like being driven, and the ones that got a little bit of high mileage, they are much faster than the ones with very low mileage and not driven. The first job is changing the cam belt. And as the Mondial has a V8 engine, it means replacing two belts rather than one. But one saving grace is that unlike most other Ferraris, the engine won't have to be removed first, as the Mondial's revolutionary design allows the cam belts to be accessed via the wheel arch. Right, well, here we go. Look at that, Mario. What do you think? I think it's a mess. The cam belts coordinate the opening and closing of the engine valves with the movement of the pistons. If a belt breaks, there's a chance the pistons will smash into the valves, potentially wrecking the entire engine. So it's better to change them sooner rather than later. How's it going, Meryl? 
suppose going well. The belts are on. Everything look good. Yeah, look, it looks really good. Mario 2 is cracking on with the service. The only potential spanner in the works is that Bernie doesn't yet know he's surplus to requirements. To this other stuff we wanted. Oh, fantastic. Perfect. That's a yeah, we've got a few bits and pieces. Yeah. Oh, look, there's Bernie. Yeah, Bernie. Hello, Bernie. Good doing, to man? see you, you again. Hello, Mario. Yeah, of course I do. That's family, all right? Walks in the workshop, and who's standing there? Mario and Mario. Will you excuse me? I just need to have a little quiet word with Mario outside. I'll okay. get you one. All right, thank you. All right. Keep on. How you doing? Yeah, I'm, uh, I was doing well. Because he's a Ferrari expert, he's working on our Ferrari. Well, hang on, am I a pot? So I've got the word schmuck on my forehead. What's Mario doing here? Well, I figured it'd be most cost-effective if we had somebody new Ferraris as opposed to buying every fire extinguisher in the building. Oh, that's funny. So you got no faith in me to do that? Bernie's a great mechanic, and he's worked on a lot of cars. But we got no time to waste, and I want it done professionally, and he's a professional. As your saying goes, this ain't my first barbecue. I've done quite I a know, few can belts on Ferraris. Engines are my baby. At least have a decency. I know yeah. you ain't got many manners, but at least, you know, oh. say to me, someone else should have come in and do it. Did he even ask me? You know, I feel really hurt and I feel upset. You know, if you really know, want to know how to pee me off, you've really done it now. Don't insult me, Mario. I don't forget this. Believe me, how OK? What do you want in the coffee, Mayor? Bernie may have been left out in the cold, but Mario's making sure his new mechanic feels right at home. Mario? Do you want oh, a hi, Mario. A oh, cheers, thank you. And I look in there, and Mario's lugging him in tea and coffee and biscuits. He's never asked me in his life. When you come back next week, give me a ring or we'll go... We'll go on the boat. On the boat. Yeah. What is going on there? He's like the flavour of the month, and I'm just like, you know, the greasy rag or something. Whoever does the service, it's a crucial part of the restoration if the car is to attract the right kind of buyer. It may not have been the most expensive Ferrari out there, but the Mondial has a loyal fan base. Hi, my name's Nick. I've got four and a half Ferraris. I've had my Mondial 8 for six years. I'm still restoring him. Probably always will be. Nick's collection may include a number of Ferraris, but the Mondial holds a special place in his heart, and he likes nothing better than showing it off. What you need is this. Ah, a daily driver. Does everything you'd want a 308 GTB to do, but in a significantly cheaper shell. The Mondial 8 has the same engine, transmission and suspension as its upmarket sibling, but at a fraction of the cost. Not everyone can afford to buy the expensive cars. With so the Mondial, you can have a car that you can drive. It's a Ferrari, you can go to the club meetings, and it's great fun. According to the Ferrari Owners Club UK, there are only three owners left in the country. Oh, that's amazing. I'd have thought there'd be many more than that. I think it would be fair to say that my wife has got used to my Ferrari habit. Being with someone that lives for his Ferraris has interesting moments. I'd always promised myself that I'll have one when I was a grown-up. Not quite sure I fit the category completely, but I'd enjoy every minute of being in there. The advice I'd give to anybody getting involved with somebody who loves Ferraris is don't do it. <laughs> Sound advice, but sadly too late for Bernie. Keen to reassert his dominance in the workshop, he waits for Mario to retire to the office before muscling in on the service. Mario's all sort of cheerful and everything. You know, he's a nice enough guy, but I want to find out exactly what's going on. Right. Ready for the... OK, all in. Mario wants these springs powder-coated so they look nice. He wants them what? Powder-coated. I'll tell you something, the only powder-coating he should have is done on his face. <laughs> have you seen the pads? I'm not going to ask him, I'm telling him. I want new rear pads and new front pads. Fantastic. That's safety. Forget Fantastic. looking pretty, right or wrong. Absolutely, Mario, yeah, right? absolutely. Finally convinced that Mario too knows what he's doing, Bernie allows him to finish in. Bernie's always happier talking man-to-man -man with another mechanic. I walk in to meet one of the governors. What's the first thing I see? Ferrari F50. These cars all up and running are worth, what, half a million pounds? That the engine alone, it must be, what, 200,000? Can you imagine if this was the car we were doing, the F50, and not our Mondial, and I said to Mario, oh, don't worry, 200,000 pounds for an engine, he'd have a bloody heart attack. Hello, mate, I'm Bernie. Oh, right, yeah, it's a Mondial. Yeah, how you yeah, doing? I'm fine, thanks, yeah. some nice stuff here. Very, very, very nice. 
Right, what parts you got for me? I've come across Phil on the internet before. Now, they run a helpline for Ferrari owners. People can type in their questions and they will give them the answers back. Oh, lovely, that's all my stuff. That's the rear dampers with the springs, the drive shaft gator. Excellent. Now, you have it. You've got still toe caps, you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bang them <laughs> down, mate. Bang them down. Can I also ask, I've actually heard that uh, you know what you're talking about. Is that right? As he's in a room with a bona fide bunch of Ferrari fanatics, Bernie grabs the opportunity to canvas opinion over the last bone of contention when it comes to the Mondial. I mean, anyone that's been in our workshop recently will know all the biggest argument we have is what colour this Mondial is going to be. All the guys in the workshop, some want it this colour, some want it that colour. That's the original colour, and I love that. I think that's really nice. Blue's a nice colour. Red's the most popular, but there's over 26 shades of red. So make sure you get Sorry? it. Sorry? There's over 26 shades of red. Ross. Choose the right one. Rosso Corsa, or Racing Red, is the traditional colour for all Italian racing cars, not just Ferraris. But Racing Red isn't one specific red, it covers a wide range of shades. As if I wasn't confused enough. And then he brings Mike over, his partner. What colour's the car originally? I would say it's 99%. Uh, there's a lot to be said for keeping it original colour. Yeah, it's either original or red. Red's the most popular colour. Yeah. But you're telling me on one end to keep it like the original colour. <laughs> That's a lovely colour. But that won't be as popular as red. Would it be worth more money if it's kept original? Possibly. Well, it hasn't really helped me very much. I'm even more bloody confused. So, as clear as mud, then. But Bernie's not going to let the matter lie. He waits until the last few days of the restoration before putting everyone on the spot. We all had different opinions, right, about the Ferrari colour. Mario wanted yellow, as he would. Some of the guys wanted red. So we decided to have a vote. Right, who would like to slot something in my box with the colour? Vote for the colour. Come on, just put it in. I know what your one says, yellow for a star. Mr D, all yours, sir. As they say, mate, you're gone. As the man in the paint spray booth, only Donnell knows what the Mondial's final colour will be. But both Bernie and Mario are confident they're right. I know the guys have done the right thing. I know they're getting it right. I don't care about this democracy thing. The car should be yellow. After a three-hour nail-biting wait, it's time for the moment of truth. What colour is this? Light blue. That's what everybody voted for. Well, who said light blue? I would like to see this in a light metallic blue. I said the original colour. The original colour is not this. It's too light. It's insipid. It looks bleeding awful. That's Sorry, how they still mate. do them today, Bernie. Personally, I thought it was quite nice. Was a bit different, brightened it up a bit. So who actually voted blue? I voted blue. I did. I didn't vote. I wanted yellow. Good, but I tell you what, go buy a yellow car. I wanted to keep it original. I wanted it blue. And he painted it blue. But it's the wrong bloody blue. This ain't the right blue for this car. I kind of agree with Bernie. Hey, this is not going to sell this car. We've got to change this color. Just paint it yellow. Push it back in. Paint We're not painting it yellow. I think, seriously, the best way to do it, we've already got a blue base there. It should be done the original Ferrari dark blue. Lovely color, I said, Daniel. Done a nice job of that. Now you're going to have to repaint it. Bernie's just like Stalin. A bit of that moustache. Outnumbered, Donnell reluctantly heads back into the spray booth. I hope we're happy because it's what you wanted, Bernie. That is a nice colour. That's pucker. Prefer that? That's how it should have been. Do you like? What do you think, guys? Better? Better than the light blue, I think, yeah. So we're rolling with this colour. If ain't got any question that you stay in this colour. After almost four weeks of bickering, the colour of the Mondial is finally sorted. But there's no time for back -patting. The team need to get cracking if they're going to make their deadline the track day. And then what should be a simple job, changing the tyres, becomes yet another problem. The problem with this Ferrari, it's got damn metric size wheels. You have to buy specific metric tyres for them. If we can find stock, and they're twice the price as normal, size tires it's actually cheaper to put on four new standard size wheels and tires than fork out for the specialist metric tires and after making some calls mario thinks he's sorted the problem 
It was very hard to get these wheels, Bernie. You got two hang, rears. Hang on, no, he's got a rear on, in front. Hang on. These things refurbishing these wheels all scratched up. Yeah. Why haven't we had them done? Uh, we just didn't have time. Let's just put them on, see what they look like. We'll do them later. Yeah, but then you've got a body that looks beautiful well, and you've got scratched bloody it. wheels. Well, it's the first thing you see when you look at a car is the body and the wheels. The rims are scratched and scuffed, but they're only ones I've been able to find. We got the track book, Bernie. I want to get them to the track. When they come back, we'll fix them up. But he's going to notice those wheels. Uh, we'll just tell him that we're going to get them done. The guy but couldn't come in. It's inside. not the point. We've worked damn hard on that car, and the thing that's going to spoil it is them damn wheels. Let's just get him on the car so we can get to the track. And that's going to lower the value. Put them on the car. Please. But with time running out, Mario's made a schoolboy error. Come on, now this is getting heavy. Never guess what. Not long enough for me. The new wheels didn't come with bolts, and the old ones are too short. Mario, what's the use with the wheels with no bolts? Mario hits the phone again to order the right bolts. But there's no guarantee they'll be here in time. The guy had them. He said he's going to curry them down. If the bolts don't get here, we're going to have to put the old wheels. We're literally against it now. They'll be here, you promise me. <sighs> we're really behind eight ball on this. Bernie knows it, and I know it. I don't know, Bernie. I don't know if we're going to finish in time. We can't work any harder than we're working now. It's not looking good. They can't fit the wheels, half the car is on the garage floor, the engine hasn't been tested, and the track day is tomorrow. It's going to be a bloody long night. Don't forget, coming up later, we'll be giving you the chance to win the 1981 Ferrari Mondial being refurbished in the show. Mario's persuaded Bernie to take on rescuing motoring royalty a Ferrari Mondial. Like, leave me out. But it soon became a war of corrosion when they discovered it was held together by more rust than metal. There ain't no metal on the car! When Bernie accidentally set the Ferrari on fire, OK, all right, all right, don't panic. Mario brought in specialist Mario number two to finish the job. No time to waste, and I want it done professionally, and he's a professional. Incredibly, in just four weeks, they'd taken a run-down track car and brought it back to its iconic best. But it's been a tough challenge. The Mondial has been stripped, its rusted structure's been fabricated and restored, Mario 2's given the engine and brakes a full service. The interiors have been totally refurbished. And it's been completely resprayed twice. But have they done enough to make a profit? Bernie and Mario have taken the Ferrari to a test track just outside London. They're here to meet former racing driver and classic car expert Paul O'Neill. He's forgotten more about cars than most of us ever knew. Paul tests and assesses all Bernie and Mario's cars before passing his report on to a number of independent appraisers to determine whether the guys are looking at a profit or a loss. The final value given to the boys will be an average of those valuations. So what does Paul think of the car? Oh, it's an interesting colour. It's original Ferrari. Original Ferrari colour. Yeah. So you kind of chose this colour then? No, that was the original colour of the car. Mm -hmm. But you wanted it yellow? Yeah, but it's Ferrari blue. <laughs> Wheels? Yeah. They look a bit scuffed to me, if I'm honest. Well, well, they're, no, no, they're, we're going to get them done. Yeah, I know. Just have the time. Not this... had the time. Bodywork doesn't look so bad. Mm. What about electronics? Uh, they're well, not great for this, are they? We, we had a few problems with it, but, like, nothing a fire wouldn't cure. Yeah. Oh, that sounds convincing. It's only joking with you. <laughs> Great condition, eh? Yeah, that's pretty good. Obviously, a Ferrari engine. Did you get a specialist to look at it? Who, who did the work? Bernie was busy, so I got a Ferrari specialist to come in. Oh, OK, cool. Yeah. Any feedback from him? He loved the car. He wanted to buy it. Really? Mm -hmm. oh, OK. That's pretty promising. No, that's good. It may look pretty, but this is a Ferrari, and the big question is, how does it perform? It's always a privilege to drive a Ferrari, but if I'm picking up that the alloy wheels are a bit scuffed and scraped, what is actually hidden underneath? Should have done them wheels, that uh, spoils it. We'll get it, we'll get them done. We'll Should have been done before. You've got to remember this car is early 80s, so it's a, you know, it is an old car. And let's be honest, a lot of Italian cars can cause you problems. Well, as I'm starting to drive this car a bit more aggressively and a bit faster, I can actually quite safely say, 
I actually do trust what the boys have done. He's given me so much feedback through the steering and the brakes and the throttle. It is actually a, a beautiful, beautiful car to drive, a typical Ferrari. You picked the color. Yellow would have been better. Oh, shut up with a bleeding yellow. this through blue. I got blue shirts. I got blue. I haven't had enough blue. You got a blue mind to go with it. Feels like a Ferrari. The engine sounds like a Ferrari. It just comes alive as soon as you get on the throttle. And if I close my eyes, I'd know I was in a Ferrari. That's what it's all about. Back at the garage, Bernie and Mario wait for Paul and the valuation based on his report. They bought the Ferrari for £8,400. They spent £6,600 on parts and another £2,800 on labour, which means they'll need a valuation of at least £17,800 just to break even. Over to Paul. Hello, guys. Hello, Hello Paul. Paul. First things first, colour of this car. A lot of people go for red. The English Ferrari should be red. For me, having a, a car in its original colour always adds value. Ferrari blue, factory colour. Everybody has their favourite Ferrari, and there is a massive price range in Ferraris, isn't there? This one is the lower end of the scale, we'd say. Mm. The one thing about the Ferrari market at the minute seems to be on the up, so that's one thing that I considered. Here it is. Thanks again, guys. Thanks very much, Paul. No Thank problem. You. <laughs> you know, I still like yellow, eh? <sighs> ah. All the work has gone into that. A valuation of £16,800 is £1,000 less than the guys have spent on the car. Bernie always had concerns about the expense of tackling a Ferrari, and now he's been proved right. I should really be spitting feathers and kicking Mario's backside around the workshop. We've actually taken a hit on this car, but to be honest, I've really fallen in love with it. Maybe I'll get a bit soft in my old age. Let's go for burn-up. Ah, uh, the Ferrari Mondial. That car was a lot more work than it should have been thanks to somebody that may remain nameless for the time being. Roller coaster ride, really. Loved it, hated it, hated it, loved it. What I can say is I never want to paint another one. It shines, it runs, we service it to death, and it really goes pretty good for a car that's over 20 years old. And at least Mario finally got to play with a Ferrari. Whoa, now you're not going to do anything stupid, are you? No, no. Yeah, 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 don't worry. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. This week, we're giving you the chance to win a little piece of Italian motoring heritage in the form of the 1981 Ferrari Mondial, refurbished in the show. Finished in metallic blue and with a 3-litre V8 engine, this four-seater Italian stallion has had a full service and comes with new cam belts, clutch, brake pads and tyres. And if that wasn't enough to tempt you, we'll even throw in up to £1,000 towards your car insurance. So if you can picture yourself behind the wheel of this Ferrari Mondial valued in the show at £16,800, call 0906 515 5555 or text CLASSIC to 66155 or post name and phone number to Ferrari, PO Box 7557, Derby, DE10 NP. Calls cost no more than £2 from a BT landline. Calls from other landlines and mobiles may cost considerably more. Text costs £2 plus one message at standard network rate. Lines close at midday on the date shown on screen and three days later for postal entries. For rules and winners, go to channel5.com forward slash win. And there's more vehicle TLC in the new episode of Classic Car Rescue, Monday at 7. Next today, though, uniforms on for our comedy film, Police Academy 2.